Hi there, my front end friends. There's a lot of advice articles and videos out there that give you roadmaps on how to become a web developer. And they just look really far into the future a lot of the time. And often the very beginning steps where you're currently at and where you're trying to learn those are the ones that are just like brushed over. So this video is for you. If you're just starting to get into web development, or maybe you're just interested in it and you want to start learning it, I want to look at the first steps you should be doing when you want to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and sort of some of the tools that you need and all of that for your very early days in that first like couple of weeks, and that's it. From there, there's so many different directions you can go in. We're not going to worry about those. Now with that out of the way, <laughs> what are the different things you need to get started? And hopefully one of them that you're currently on right now or currently have is a computer. If you have something that can open the browser and connect to the internet, it's enough. But having a keyboard, a physical keyboard, is a really important thing. It's going to make your life so much easier. There are videos out there where people show you how you can get code editors working on your phone or on tablets, and there's options for that as well. I don't want to say that you cannot do it. I just want to say that it will be a lot more work if you're going that way. And there's sort of like an extra friction that will be taking place. And of course, I know you can get like physical keyboards on um, tablets now. So that could definitely help out as well, especially early on. But if you do have a laptop sitting around or a cheap computer, whatever it is, or, you know, if you can go and find something, that's sort of the one investment that would really help pay off and really help you out in your journey. Now, I mentioned a browser. Obviously, if you're getting into web development, you will need a, a browser to get, you know connect on, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari. Any of them will work. Chrome is the most popular one that people usually develop in, but I'd recommend getting all of them so you can test across the different uh, the different browsers you're going to be using, but don't worry too much about testing yet. We're early days. Uh, so just a browser, and of course, let me do write the code in, which is an editor. You hear things like ID thrown around, don't worry about that. You just need something that's, we call them text editors basically, but they're a bit fancier. Um, and the most popular one is VS Code. You might hear of other ones like Sublime Text, Notepad++, even Atom. Uh, if you hear about Atom, it's an older one. There's lots of videos and tutorials that exist from the older days where that was the most popular one, but it's dead now. And VS Code has completely taken over the market. It's by far the most popular. And you will also see mentions of Notepad++ around. I wouldn't really recommend it. VS Code is just, it's a the standard. You see it used everywhere. It's really easy to customize. There's tons of plugins. You can really make it your own. It's very feature rich, but it's also really easy to get started with. So you can just get started with it and start going and then add on to it slowly over time to make it more of your own thing. Uh, Notepad++ is a bit more limited in what it can do. And I just, for me, I don't see the point in starting with that. I would just go straight into VS Code. You will not be overwhelmed by it at its at the beginning, and it's very easy to learn and get used to. Now, one thing I've never done is actually made a video on getting started with VS Code, though. And if that is something you'd be interested in, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Now, having an editor is great and all, but obviously you, we have an editor for what purpose. We're going to be writing a few different languages. And the three languages that you are going to have to learn, and maybe you're in the process of learning those now, are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They are each responsible for a different thing. So HTML is hypertext markup language, and this is the content that is on the page. You're adding the content with HTML. There's CSS, which is our cascading style sheets, which is what changes what the content looks like. So this is just like when you go into Word and you select something and then you change the color and the font size and the font family and all of those different things. Uh, it's just we're doing it with code instead of using a menu to select it and sort of go through the different options that are in Word or whatever your Word processor, Google Docs, anything like that. We're doing it with code instead. And then the third language is JavaScript, which is for interactivity. And basically, it's if, if you can't do it with HTML and CSS, then JavaScript comes in. And you can think of like an interactive thing that you see on almost every single website is a hamburger menu. So if you're on mobile and you have like the button you can push and often on desktop sites these days, you see them too. And you push the button and the menu opens and there's a little X and you click that and the menu closes. That interactivity is created using JavaScript. Now, my recommendation for learning these languages is generally you start with HTML because without the content, you have nothing. You can't do anything with CSS or JavaScript if you have no HTML. So getting started there and learning the very basics of it is obviously the best place to start. But very quickly, you're probably going to get into CSS and start changing what things look like, because if not, your pages are terribly boring looking. Uh, so you start changing things up and adding some styles with your CSS. And then eventually you start adding that interactivity with JavaScript. And the one thing I'll say is people always ask me, like, I've, I've been doing CSS for four months now. Can I start doing JavaScript? 
yes, of course you can. You do not need to be an expert at any of these to be able to start learning the next one. In fact, you, you will not be a master of any of them in three months or six months or even a year. You're always going to be learning and always adding on to your skills of all of these languages. And so what I would recommend is start getting comfortable with one and learn the syntax of it. Because that is one of the complicated things when you get into it is we have three different languages that all are completely different from one another. <laughs> the, the way we write them is different. The way they work is different. What they do is different. So it can feel like a lot and it definitely is. But you know, you're not going to learn all of HTML and then go over to CSS. There's like 120 elements or something like that in HTML. And then to learn what all of them do, that's never going to happen. There's only like 20 elements as far as I'm concerned at the very beginning, you really need to know. And actually, if you're curious what those are, I've done a video that looks at those as well. I'll link to that down at the bottom and remind you at the end of this video about that one though. But yeah, you start off with like, okay, I'm comfortable. I've made like, I can put in some paragraphs. I can make my list. Now let's start using some CSS and learn a little bit about that. How can I change the colors of these? How can I change my fonts? How can I do a simple little layout that looks a little bit nicer? And then once you've gone through that enough times and you're comfortable getting some CSS on there, there's no harm in adding a touch of JavaScript in there and at least like poking into a little bit, seeing what it's about. Maybe you'll go like, oh, you know what? I'm not ready for this and I want to focus more on this other thing. But just having an idea of what it is is really good to have because you're going to be writing a lot of it eventually. So don't hold back and feel like you need to be a master of one of them before you can move on to the next because you're just going to be losing time because it really, well, it's not going to give you like some benefit of being so much more comfortable there because even if you're learning JavaScript, you're going to be using CSS at the same time anyway. So you're going to be continuing to learn on that side of things. So that's why it's just comfortable enough understanding the syntax, understanding the basics of it. And then you're probably okay to start at least sprinkling in a little bit of the new stuff on some other things as well. Now, one mistake that I see beginners making is that they feel like because we're making websites <laughs> that they're going to be like designing the page as they're learning the code. But the problem is designing something and coding something are two very different skill sets. So if you're not a designer, it can be really hard to design something. And if you're trying to design while you're learning to code, that's just like this whole extra layer of friction because you're splitting your mind into like two different things. And if you're learning design and you're learning code, it's really hard to do. And I wouldn't recommend it. I would code up things where you have a design and you're just trying to recreate it. Because if you get into front end development, you're not going to be the designer. Someone else is the designer and you're taking those designs and bringing them to life and making them work in the browser. You now, some people are a jack of all trades and they're both the designer and they're the developer and that's fine. But most people are one or the other. Now, as far as finding things to actually, you know, where can you find designs that you can practice your skills on? There's two websites that I often recommend. There is I code this as well as front end mentor. Those are sites where you get designs. There's like challenges and stuff like like that for like here's like a design you can try and build if you also want to just go you can go to like dribble.com or behance and find like these are people sharing their designers who are sharing their designs and you can just try and make those a lot of the stuff people share there they're trying to show off so there's more advanced things so if you're further along in your journey that could be good but in the early days you probably want to keep it a little bit simpler so you're not overwhelming yourself so either i code this or a uh, front-end mentor i think are nice places to start now another thing that i see beginners doing is feeling like they're not making any progress and sometimes maybe this is from those those videos where it's giving you this long-range forecast or roadmap not a forecast but a long-range roadmap uh, or there's other ones where it's like how I got a job in tech after four months and stuff like that. Like for most people, that's not going to happen. And it's a long range thing. There's lots of things that you need to be learning. You might be doing this part time on the side. Uh, you know, I, there's people changing careers. They're just doing it in the evenings. They're trying to learn development or they're at school and they're doing this. But whatever it is, like it's not this two or three month thing. And all of a sudden you're an expert. And sometimes people come and talk to me and they're like, it's been four months I've been doing this and I feel like I'm still a beginner. <laughs> You've only been doing it for four months. Of course, you're still a beginner. That's really, really normal. Like how many things could you become an expert at in four months, no matter how much time you're putting into it? It's not realistic. Now, if you're doing 40 hours a week of practice and studying and all of that stuff, maybe after four months, you're starting to be able to get really comfortable with what you're doing at a beginner level. And maybe you could start looking for junior level jobs. Different people are gonna go at different speeds and I'm not saying it's impossible, but even if you've been doing it for four months and you feel like you're a beginner, what you should do is actually look at where you started and look at all the different things that you have learned because I guarantee you it's a lot more than you might realize. And it's easy to look at, you're watching videos where people are like coding along perfectly in these tutorials, which are all pre-recorded and all the mistakes are edited out. I know because I make these all the time. 
Uh, so it's not realistic. People are Googling things all the time. You're looking for things, you're running into bugs that you can't fix and it takes a long time for to find that typo, right? Everybody makes those mistakes, including advanced developers. So first of all, you might be doing better than you actually think you are. And the other thing though is like, it is a long game and it's gonna take you a long time to get good at something because it takes a long time to get good at anything. You have to put in a lot of work to develop a skill. And on that note, I was talking about practice a little bit. You need to practice a lot watching tutorials, watching videos on YouTube, reading articles, that's great. That's how you learn about things. You, you, you learn new things by doing that, but you don't learn how to do those things. Just like you're not gonna learn how to skateboard by watching other people skateboard. You might know, okay, that's how I push and all of those things. That's how, oh look, I've watched him do an ollie a whole bunch of times. I sort of understand the different steps of doing that. Or you're watching YouTube videos where it's showing you all the things in slow motion. You're like, I know it. You go to do it, you're not gonna be able to do it the first try or the second try or even the hundredth try. Like you're eventually maybe gonna start being able to do your ollie or whatever. So like, don't just consume content. You need to practice, practice, practice constantly. Be building things. And if you don't know what to build, try those sites that I recommended earlier. They're linked down below as well. And maybe find a passion project. Find something that you would find fun to build. And maybe you don't even know how to do all the different things, but that even gives you your roadmap on the new, the next skills that you need to learn. Because that's something that everybody's always after is the roadmap. What's the next thing I need to learn? Build things. And as you're building them, you're going to run into things you don't know. And that tells you what you need to learn next. Because everybody's journey and everybody's path along the way is going to be different once you get past those very beginner stages of I learned the basics of HTML, I learned the basics of CSS, and I learned the basics of JavaScript. And even when you're learning, each one will be different for everybody. So, you know, try and build stuff. And then to accomplish that, you will know exactly what you need to learn next. Another thing I'm going to give as, as a suggestion for learning is practicing is the best thing you can ever do. But another thing, if you are just consuming some content is to reinforce what you've learned by taking notes after your learning session is done. Nobody does this or not enough people do it. Uh, this is really a nice way to reinforce everything. You just write like a bullet list of the different things you've done, but explain it a little bit. Don't be like, I learned about JavaScript loops or I learned what an HTML tag was or whatever, like explain it in your notes. It does not need to be this in-depth article that's thousands of words, put down 50 words at the end of the day just to explain each thing that you've learned. And this is really just going to help reinforce everything you're doing because you're putting it into your own words. It might sound really silly, but if you've never tried it, please give it a chance for like a week straight. And I promise you, you're going to see some more progress than you were making before. And you're going to start understanding things at a much deeper level than you were before as well. Now, the other thing that I'm going to suggest also here is do not rely just on following YouTube videos like you're watching now or reading articles but you need to develop the skill of asking questions. And there's different places you can ask questions. There's Google, <laughs> it, there, there's memes out there that like a professional developer is just a professional Googler. Uh, and it's pretty true because we often know that things are possible, but we don't know how to do them. I'm aware that I can do that. Now I just have to find like the exact syntax on how that thing works. And I'm going to look that up and find out what that is because there's way too much to know as a developer. We can't know it all and memorize all of it. You're going to build up a lot of muscle memory and you are going to memorize things just by doing them over and over and over again. But there's a lot of things that you're just going to be like, Oh, I know that's possible because I saw that video or read it in an article. Let me refresh my mind on actually how to do it. So getting good at Googling is a really good skill. And these days as well, you have AI tools that can help out as well. AI is not coming to steal the jobs, but it's a very nice tool that can help us because if you run into something that you don't understand, maybe you watch a video of mine and read an article and there's an explanation in there that you don't understand. You can ask the AI to clarify it for you in simple terms, and sometimes they do really good jobs. You can also ask it to like, if you have code that's not working, you can give it the code that's not working and ask it to fix it. And it can often will find the mistake that's in your code and be able to fix it for you and sometimes give you a note on even what was wrong with it. But I will caution on the AI front as well is they're not very good at code, um, especially not right now anyway. And they will sometimes give you code that doesn't work or that has mistakes in it and other things. So do be careful with that. Um, especially with CSS, it doesn't understand the contexts enough. So if you're getting into CSS and there's things there, like if you made a typo or if you got a semicolon somewhere, it will find that. Uh, it might give you some suggestions, but do not rely on AI as a code writing tool. Use it a lot like you would use Google for little snippets and getting like help along the way. 
and getting being able to prompt AI properly is a skill on its own. So learning how to use the AI effectively and learning the limitations of it could be useful, but maybe early on you don't want to touch it just because you might not recognize when it makes mistakes in the code and a better place might be to actually ask real people uh, that can help you out with things because there's lots of very helpful people. It's one of the best things about the front end community and, and world is how people are willing to share and help each other out. And you might be wondering where can I get help and I actually have a Discord community that's all about helping out other front end developers. You can go there just to ask questions. You can also meet other people. There's a whole bunch of different channels and stuff just to chat. Uh, and there's areas to ask questions on front end and back end development on UI and UX and other stuff like that as well. So if you're curious about that or want to join in, even if you're just going to lurk around, but please do say hi if you do join. Uh, but the link for that is just in the description as well. And so if you are early on in your journey, and if you're still watching this video now, I'm assuming you are, I just want to say, don't worry about going really fast. I know I mentioned this before, but just take your time in what you're learning now. You might spend two weeks and feel like it's going really slowly or you're not getting it or whatever it is, it will get there for you. And I promise you, you're going to be making faster progress than you think you actually are. And then as a quick reminder, there was that video that I mentioned earlier about the 20 essential tags that you should probably know right now if you're just getting started with HTML. So if you'd like to watch that video, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome TTLLD, Andrew James, Enrico, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.